This airport became one of West Africa's best airports to the level that it started gaining recognition and award. In 2019, they won the best award in West Africa, and in 2020, they won the award of Airport of the Year. Talk about something that this got to me, and I was like, no, this is it. I can't even keep lying. I can't even keep lying and defending my country. But honestly, Ghana presently, as at now, they are leading, they are winning. Hi, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Lillian. So guys, in today's video, I have two videos I want us to take a look at by Nigerians. I am thrilled to see Nigerians as intelligent as this ones, no doubt. Like, it is shock me and it is sweet me. And sometimes it is jealous me because I used to feel like maybe we have so many unintelligent people and just a few are intelligent. But deep, deep down my heart, I love it. So we are going to take a look at two fine girls from Nigeria that have been in Ghana. And they have this to see i think we should start with the one of the airports or so a nigerian girl just landed in ghana and her first impression of the kutoka airport had just helped to confirm the video i made previously talking about adeola wishing that the airport in what do you call the airport in america is it logat airport in america she liking it to that of the airport in ghana and she she wishes that it's somewhere in nigeria right so this video is just a confirmation to that video that i made so let's start with her right before we move to the other girl ladies and gentlemen boys and girls this is an important information to let you know that this flight is about to land and it's actually in the vicinity of ghana with so much joy in my heart i am here to officially welcome you to kotoka international airport in this video i will take you on an exclusive tour of the airport facilities highlighting its unique features and amenities now firstly i would like to share an interesting and exciting story of the history of kotoka international airport right from its humble beginnings to its current state being a world-class airport imagine a time when accra that's ghana's capital city was a small town surrounded by vast open spaces yeah it was in the year 1930s and yes the world was actually changing very fast and by that time air travel was becoming popular and ghana needed an airport now in 1930s, the British built a small airstrip in Accra. It was called Accra Airport. History had it that when the first plane landed in Accra Airport, it carried traders, it carried adventurers and diplomats. And during the World War II, the airport played a very crucial role helping allied forces. Now, in 1957, Ghana gained independence and it was at that point the airport was renamed to Kotoka International Airport after three years which is in 1960. And this name Kotoka International Airport was given in honor of late General Emmanuel Kotoka, a Ghanaian hero. So as Ghana grew, so did the airport grew. More planes arrived and international flights connected Accra to the world. Hotels were built to welcome travelers. The airport became modern and very efficient. Now in the new era in the 1990s, Ghana opened its door to private investment. And you know, this airport was transformed with new terminals, new roads and facilities. And guess what? A very big upgrade happened between the year 2014 and 2018. This airport underwent a massive makeover worth $250 million. That was when Terminal 3 was built, which increased the passenger capacity to 5 million people. This airport became one of West Africa's best airports to the level that it started gaining recognition and award. In 2019, they won the best award in West Africa and in 2020, they won the award of Airport of the Year. Now, this Kotoka International Airport welcomes over 4 million passengers annually. It is a hub for business, tourism and culture that employs over 2,500 people 
and in future i believe that it's able to continue to expand with new terminals and technology as it remains the gateway to ghana good job baby girl good job but i want to correct you it's not the gateway to ghana but the gateway to africa all right it is what it is just like we we have hold the giant title like our lives depend on it <laughs> so it mustn't be tempered with right the gateway to africa title for ghana must also be protected and be stayed that way and be given to them without any arguments so did you see the similarity and when she came in she could see the light she has other airport tours that she have done like uh, airports in my country you know i hate to bring videos from nigeria and videos from ghana to put them side by side because it, it makes me feel a certain way it's not like i'm against it but i would rather do one at a time because you get why you know because there are things i will see i'll just get angry and just get pissed up and just <laughs> at different times so that's what she has to say and i know it's just a matter of time people are going to come for her and she's going to change her tune it's not everyone that can stand the heat of you know being truthful on this space but to some of us we are here and you don't know why sometimes some nigerians are afraid of me it's because of where i come from ask about me ask about us you know the head of witchcraft mm -hmm. they do wish where where <laughs> And I like that impression. That is what impression I have refused to correct. Mm? The witchcraft title of the Ogoja people. Please, I like it. You should continue that way. <laughs> so you guys, as a matter of fact, I have outgrown videos like this because I've done them in the past where I try to prove points to people. Oh yeah, I'm not the only one that feels this way about Ghana. I'm not the only one, you know, I'm not the only one saying the truth ah so i took like have been i i wanted to stop doing them but now i've i'm doing them i want to do them because my spotlight is on nigeria so when my spotlight is on you can anything can happen it can be on you or your people so today is on the people and what they have to say about ghana now we are going to take a look at another video by a nigerian what she thinks about ghana versus nigeria who is the best the, the best like who is the best without mining words <laughs> the actors the, the best and we don't argue when it comes to like the government the president this and that they always win us on that but then we still stand on our ground saying nigeria is better but honestly like deep down in my heart i just knew like ghana that's ghana is better it makes stuff going about so i woke up this morning and i saw a news I saw the president of Ghana talking. He spoke about something that this got to me and I was like, no, this is it. I can't even keep lying. I can't even keep lying and defending my country. But honestly, Ghana presently, as of now, they are leading, they are winning. So let me read to you guys. I think I wrote it down. I'll try to attach the video while I'm editing. I'll look for the video because I saw the video somewhere and I just typed down what he was saying okay i read this was what the president of ghana said okay from his mouth directly i was typing he said the ghana water company limited and the electricity of ghana have been directed to ensure the stable supply of water and electricity during this period in addition there will be no disconnection of supply Furthermore, government will absorb the water bills for all Ghanaians for the next three months, that is April, May and June. All water tankers publicly and privately owned are also going to be mobilized to ensure the supply of water to all vulnerable communities. This is what he said. So for three months straight, April, May and June, there will be no disconnection of water supply and electricity supply in Ghana. This is crazy because normally Ghana's electricity supply is top notch. Honestly, when I was in Ghana, like sometimes three or four days straight, they don't take the light for like three hours. It feels like, ah, oh, what's happening? What's happening? Like, it feels weird. I when they bring the slides back, they hardly take it again to some days for like some hours and not the full day. But for them to say that there will be no disconnection at all, that means Ghana is about to be a small America. And normally, we, even in Nigeria, we've been begging. 
I'm going to attach a video of a Nigerian actress who was actually begging online for Nigeria to provide electricity because now we're on lockdown for two weeks and it's going to be crazy without light. Because Good morning, everybody. Truly, um, I'm very, 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 very upset. And as a matter of fact, I feel like crying. What kind of country is this? What is it? You said people should stay at home. We all understand that this coronavirus is killing and it's everywhere. But what kind of a country is this for God's sake? Why is it that nothing, why is it that something something cannot walk, walk in this country? There's no light. People are sitting at home, some people bought perishable yesterday and tried to stock their houses for them to stay. And everywhere is generator sound. We are doing everything humanly possible within our reach to encourage people to sit at home, tell them the danger of this. And for God's sake, give light. Government, give us light. Give light. 20 naira now that no, 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 come out for inside fuel. For God's sake, in these two weeks, if it is only natural that you can just give this light, leave it. Let people be able to sit in their house. The, the, the small children will be able to watch television at least. Live light now. Live light. And what Nigeria did that in their mind they feel they've done something is they reduced the fuel price from 145 presently now it's 120 they just removed for the five naira so what they tell us that you have to buy for you go buy for you go tire so they just reduced the price for us a little but we have we've been begging them please provide electricity during this lockdown it's going to be crazy with south light posted a video where he, her gen bonds because of like she's been using the gen over and over again and you just caught fire but see what ghana did and we call ourselves the giant of africa how oh, wait it got to a time when i was in ghana i got pissed and i was like let me even google like why are we even called the giants of africa and when i checked on google i'll put it for you guys to see we are called the giants of africa because we are the most populated country in africa and the seventh most populated country in the world that is the only reason i don't know if that's the only reason but that's a reason that's one of the reasons why we are called the giant of africa because we are overpopulated like how is that even a reason so because of we are plenty in the country we are the giant of africa really so when i saw this when i saw this this morning i was like no ghana is leading ghana has won because if our president later country in the world that is the only reason i don't know if that's the only reason but that's a reason that's one of the reasons why we are called the giant of africa because we are overpopulated like how is that even a reason so because of we are plenty in the country we are the giant of africa really so when I saw this, when I saw this this morning, I was like, no, Ghana is leading. Ghana has won. Because if our president do something like this, or if any president do something like this in Nigeria, then that's like one thing we are going to remember this president for because it has never happened in Nigeria before. And during this pandemic period where we even need electric electricity the most, they are not even taking it into consideration. But look at what Ghanaian president did. I mean, still call himself. No, honestly, let's be truthful to ourselves. Ghana is leading. And another thing is this. When this, when this corona thing came to Ghana, electricity go hot. And before we begin this video, before you guys start coming for me, like, I've she even been to Ghana for her to even see this thing. I did my university in Ghana, okay? So I was in Ghana, I've been to Ghana, and I was there for four years because I schooled in Ghana for four years. And this is like enough time for me to say that Ghana is really really a very good country and honestly i always wanted to like talk about this topic while i was in ghana because we always have this nigeria and ghana fight all the time and yeah i always have to fight to it because we always argue about this thing and as a nigerian i have to support my country like oh nigeria is better we have the best we have a better jollof we have better musicians we have this we have that that's what we just argue about the musicians the jollof the actors the but we don't argue when it comes to like the government the president this and that they always win us on that but then we still stand on our ground saying nigeria is better but honestly like deep down in my heart i just knew like ghana that's ghana is better 
because whilst I was in this country, I was seeing a lot of things. Uh, I think we are called the giant because of suffering, the giant of suffering and smiling. <laughs> we are long suffering. Uh, no, the truth is, Nigeria is giant when it comes to long suffering, and everybody is used to suffering. If you don't suffer, it means you are not good enough. You can see even in our movies, this is how we tell our stories. Okay, there's a guy who went to uni, managed to graduate, lost his parents before graduation. His uncle took everything from him, so he had nothing left. So he had to like start life from the very beginning. He couldn't get a job, went to the site to build, I mean building site to do like brickly bricklayer, right? Or to carry cement, you know, you go do car wash, you go do different things, and then after you don't do all those things, you have the guy that is accommodating him, throw him out, then all of a sudden he will just walk on the road, someone will just appear from nowhere and help him. You know, someone he has met before, you know, they, then you become rich. Uh -huh. And when the case is not like that, maybe that his friend is an Oboni guy, is into some demonic activities, into some illegal thing, and he would join the society, the secret society, and then when he makes money, even when he kills somebody, the story writer will make it that, okay, he later got delivered, he later got saved because he didn't go into that act because of greed. He went there because he wanted to survive. But in actuality, the law says that whoever sins shall die. He didn't say who sinned because he is helpless, uh, uh, shall be safe. But the one that sinned because of greed shall, shall, shall die. Do you understand? So even in our stories, we tell this kind of story. So giant, my dear sister, my fine girl, our old video shall go there now. She feel don't change tune, but I'm going to be using people's old video to do videos for now. I'm looking for views basically. Mm? You understand? So the giant thing is giant. We are, we suffer like giant of suffer like we have suffered and we love it it's a norm do you understand <laughs> anyways i just use that video especially the one of the airport to prove my points that adeola likened the airport in lugat the lugat airport in america to that of kotoka airport and she wishes that for nigeria <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm working i'm on nigeria series okay if i get the views i'll continue if you don't view the videos i'll quit <laughs> thank you i will see you in my next one bye